It's Ricker and Bond, everybody, your favorite podcast. Hugest episode to ever come to you to date. We got Fed cuts. We got mortgage rates. Nike CEO. And a comprehensive review of new iOS 18 and Mac OS Sequoia. And if we have time, we're going to get into this Diddy news because, you know, that's the biggest thing on the ticket for today. So uh, keep it right here. everything you know about federal funds not a lot but i do know <laughs> that everybody was wrong cuts, they wanted 25 i do know that rate cuts are or a rate cut has been um expected for a while now on the condition well, that um inflation cooled off apparently right now it is lower than it was uh, in pre-pandemic levels or at the same level. So uh, that's a good thing. USA not turning into Venezuela anytime soon. Um, hopefully. I, there's. I, I want to put a pin in this, but the sentiment of less than stellar as an overall arching POV for like stocks right now and like companies. I'll get into that later, but probably just because of growth. But Fed, cut rates, and first time for over four years, there's a little thing called the pandemic app. And you ever heard of it, dude? You ever heard oh, of it? Oh, yes. I lived Sorry. it. I was on the <laughs> battlefield. I was right there. I was listening to After Hours in my room uh, the day. It, it, he literally released it the day after, like, L.A. County did whatever they did. Bro Sorry. knew. Big weekend mode, big weekend mode. But I have a. I was longingly looking out in my lazy boy outside of the window into the LA cityscape listening to a brand new album in a brand new world some might say that was the perfect age for like a pandemic to happen <laughs> for us because we were like what 24 25 we're not in high school so like we can we can do stuff we're not in college so we already had the college experience we didn't miss out on shit we had a little bit of party time after um oh, we were two like years. Yeah, we weren't like in our thirties, so like no kids, so it didn't really hurt that bad that we were unemployed. It either Fucking... like derailed my career trajectory and just what I do, or like the opposite of that. I can't tell I, that. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it did to me, but I had a blast. Like, <laughs> got a little TikTok fame, got a job out of it, <laughs> flying me everywhere. I was flush full of cash. I was doing fucking ads you know, for I did, thousands I did of dollars. I did do that too. Not doing the ads, but I was I was going out and about. Fuck, dude. The mortgage rates were as low as they have ever been. Ever didn't didn't uh, didn't get that, but you know, good yeah. fun to look back on. Fucking made a bunch of money, blew it all on a fucking bad business decision. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh learned a lot of course do? not i did not like i blew my 401k at a, as a 65 year old so right, not tripping too right. hard um yeah, but you didn't cash out all your doge on um two percent mortgage though fuck doge i made the real money on sheep that was but what i'm saying is uh someone a lot of people probably out there in 2020 just had seen just a little bit of a cycle before I was saying that I was pretty new to anything financial and cyclical. And mm -hmm. some of these cats were just waiting for something to happen since like, Oh eight. And they saw just fake money go to the moon and back lowest mortgage ever. They bought some, some rental properties, kicking it. 
and then and then watched everything go up for the next four years. My God, dude. I don't know. Like, because I, I would walk around the neighborhood looking at houses being, wouldn't it be nice? So I don't know why I didn't just pull the trigger. I don't even know if I had enough to put a down payment on a house in LA, even a small house. Um, I but I like, <laughs> like I had like enough to like, I don't know, maybe buy a condo or something. <laughs> I did. Um, well, say it me. Yeah, but oh, that's well. what a lot of people are dealing with. They're talking about the uh, the old lock-in effect, where uh, people had some some low ass mortgages and they don't want to sell because the I premium primo mortgage is a uh, is what they had, and they don't want to do anything different. So, what do these rate cuts mean? Uh, is hiring going to pick back up again? Um, are Probably. startups going to raise more? <laughs> Are startups going to raise more cheap capital to fund Doge, I was, Dogecoin I was, Land Express? I was talking to a few people about um, anytime there's headlines of you know unemployment ticking up, I'm somehow caught in all of it. <laughs> I've been in the the crappy crypto startups for basically my all. Oh my yeah, how was that? I mean, cyclical. <laughs> it sucks. Really, I was in a. Hey, I was in on the arm of a crypto division of a Classic. profitable company that has nothing <laughs> to do with crypto. So they were just experimenting. And I remember when they had those <laughs> quarterly meetings and this, the words from the CEO's mouth came, we experienced our, a loss this quarter. I started packing my bags because I know I knew who was supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. Seeing and the clients they, trickle out less. They've wiped every fucking <laughs> remnant of that project from the internet. You can't find it anywhere. Good like, on they them. didn't even keep it up for fucking sentimental reasons. They fucking cleared <laughs> But yeah, Good I don't know. Dude. Good business decision in retrospect. Probably a bad anyway. to start it up. Yeah, really dumb. And the That's lady that like... The lady that started it left like right after it launched to Ooh. another another crypto website, and then she got dude. laid off. Sick of them, dude. Well, the one she Sick went to for her credit was like a fucking. It's like a credit with CoinDesk, credible one. They've been around for. A I while. mean, yes, but it, the same things happen. Yeah, it's it's all bad management. It's all super dependent on free money from interest rates all super dependent on markets and I will go back to the first point of super not well run businesses. Also it's like publishing. If you were a blockchain developer in 2021, you could have comfortably asked for 300 K <laughs> a year from a tech company. <laughs> With a smile on your face. With a smile. And that would have been like low. You'd have been like, okay, I got four <laughs> other offers from Just these fucking some these NFT platforms. Like four things different than a, I don't even know. I, mean, I guess the language is all different, but yeah, bad, bad decisions from some CEOs. Uh, you know, some things go out of, out of cycle, out of, out of favor in, in people's eyes. Nike, I'm trying to think, um, kind of one of those. What do you think? There's anyone that survived from that era. Like Publications are like, no, like base. companies. <laughs> Like it's that work off fees that again are super cyclical and only happen if you have enough people or money, I suppose. Yeah, what the fuck were we thinking? Oh. <laughs> hey, yo, Bitcoin for life, baby. I just want to make that clear. Bitcoin for life, everything else. Like a solid ten percent. Like a solid ten percent in there. Fuck everything uh, else. That's not Bitcoin. You know, I I I did. I I told myself last cycle I'd put some risk on. I don't know if I brought this up before, but. I was in there. I was in the Solana, whenever that popped up. I was in the base, you know, base Coinbase is base. Oh some God! Some good meme coins. I told myself I put some risk on. Fuck 50%. Solana. <laughs> fuck a fuck fuck Ethereum. Fuck Cardano like to insane. hell. Yeah, you know. Fuck it all. Disgusting. Bitcoin Ugh. go up, baby. Bitcoin for life. Always, always all was day. that too. It was never. I mean trading but i didn't trade for crypto 
the truth was right in front of us <laughs> the whole Bitcoin time. Bitcoin is not for trading. No, it's for uh, hoping that some other people value it higher in the future, like everything Bitcoin else. Bitcoin is for that accumulation, baby. Give it all to <laughs> me. I want it because the more I have, the less you do. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Let's get into this Nike. Oh yeah, let's tell me what's going on there because I don't really know. Do you got Nikes on your feet or what? No, I'm rocking Adidas at the moment. I'm rocking Hocus. You're rocking oh. Hocus. <laughs> no, I can't which say is, that I have. Which is Deckers. Um, so Nike again goes back to the the sentiment of quote unquote less than stellar is what I'm seeing lately. Everything's being a little. Less than stellar. Starbucks has been less than stellar. Chipotle, less than stellar. Check out the <laughs> Chipotle report. I'll post it on Rick and Bond. One, two, new Chipotle. You know, Are you talking about like their, their stock price or their profitability or their product? More sentiment. Um, I could look at the charts, but just the, the experience as a user. I don't um, know what the fuck happened to Chipotle, man. It's like... <laughs> we're, really, we're really being non-Chipotle. This Four is the out of five times, episode. it's just, yeah, it's just like not that good. I, I, okay, but I have never experienced that. It's always been good. The stock is dollar sign CMG, and it's going low slow for me. Uh, Chipotle's never been bad in my eyes. Not yeah, but you ever go experience. and it's just like, oh, the fucking chicken's cold. Like no. everything's just cold and hard. Like you never like gotten like Absolutely the tail not. end of the chicken portion nope. because now it seems like especially the one downtown it seems like that's that's the case more and more well stocks pretty dang high it is a pretty big drawdown but have you ever been um, to kava not yet it's Probably pretty good, good. Right? it's pretty good uh, yeah, kava group is just give Chipotle a pretty a nice chart pretty nice chart kava 2023, usually you see those IPOs go up and then down. I'll give you maybe two years to see how you're doing, but... Um, I think you should try so, it. I'll try it on my trip. We can, I know, we can they, take I know they got one in me. San Diego. But they're kind of fucking... There's not really one downtown. Like, <laughs> like we got to make Wait. sure to Pasadena. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, I've been yeah it's, kind of a, it's kind Anyways. of a drive. Companies, uh, maybe not as far as their stocks, a couple of them. I think Nike is indeed one of those that has been bad, less than stellar in the in the chart wise. But CEO ousted from Nike. New CEO is Elliot Hill. What a name. Super CEO y name. He is uh, succeeding John Donahue. Uh, Mr. Donahue's on as an advisor still. Nike stock just absolutely halved it looks like a really slow cryptocurrency more like a what mountain is, and not the classic guillotine chart uh, where is his new ceo what what is his previous work he's he's a he's a nike alum he's a, a former nike executive so they're getting ah, some, internal some old hire. blood i don't know if he was an internal or former I, I believe former nike somewhat internal but not really more like a starbucks um, so you tell me after hours. what's wrong with Nike? Why? Why is it stock half? No Brand idea. issue, well, poor quality product. Let's hear it. Uh, one, revenue growth slowing. Two, bad direct to consumer. Uh, their DTC sales dropped by eight percent in the quarter, bringing in mm -hmm. uh, five point one million. Nike's revenue fell two percent in Q four. Uh, missed estimates and everybody know that wall street loves uh anticipation and if you don't anticipate good enough it's no bueno uh, you know i seem company. to recall an analyst saying that nike messed up on their retail department because they tried to make the only way you can buy nike stuff from nike stores for a while so they pulled all their stuff from other stores and that just fucked them Sure. Maybe, but now they like reversed. They reverse course, hurt. and now you can buy them other places. But 
I don't like really go out looking for Nike stuff, but I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because you know, there's not that many Nike stores. I don't know if I've ever seen one. Yeah, there's like Um, maybe one or two in LA or three. So revenue declined. They uh, they still beat on earnings per share, point nine nine versus a forecast of point six six, which is pretty good. Um, And then there's just a bunch of other shoes that are competing. You see uh, uh, the eye test. A lot of people wearing Hoka's, which is Decker's. A lot of people wearing New Balance or Birkenstocks. I think running Birkenstock. Pretty sure public. Pretty sure crazy. Yeah. Birkenstock has been around since like 1841. Yeah, they old as fuck. Anyway, so new CEO. um, Going back to the theme of everything's doing a little less than stellar besides a few things uh, besides maybe not tech up holding charts, everything but... up yeah and everyone's saying oh tech freaking interest rates down go to mid cap screw you dude oh. go to those juicy juicy index funds Staying VOO new all time high I don't I don't pick stocks I just let's get the funds just big old tech in the big old fund I seem That's to be like. wrong more than I'm right. <laughs> Stock picking, so I just leave it to the winners. So huh. we have an option here. We could either talk about some more CEO drama or Diddy drama. Fuck. Okay, what's the other CEO <laughs> we're talking about? It is kind of funny. Uh, I don't know much about the company, but it's a, it's a company called Open Web. It's a startup. They help publishers engage with users somehow. Uh, the company announced a new CEO and then the co-founding CEO was like, no, this isn't true and has never been true. I'm still CEO. See you guys in office. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds like something an employee there would be confident in. <laughs> they don't even know who the CEO is. Yeah, for real. So the uh, the new guy was Tim Harvey. Harvey sent an email to employees uh, thanking the former CEO for his incredible passion, quote unquote, and confirming uh, the leadership transition. And then after that, you know, you're doing your work, coding probably, DDDDD, coding at a startup. Oh, new CEO. I mean, okay. And then 12 <laughs> minutes later, the founding CEO was like, no, that's actually false. I'm not stepping out. Stuck a wean. I'm staying, maybe. Maybe he was Found ousted him. without his knowledge. You know, Shovel did Sam, accuse the board. Free Sam Altman found out he was fired on Twitter. That lasted not long. Yeah, that was that was the biggest mess. Imagine if we had been on, been on air during that time. <laughs> I think I did post something on the Instagram. That was fucking crazy. When he, when he came back. Uh, this this open web company deleted founding CEO's profile from the page. They raised oh, around wow. four hundred million from investors. Last value at one point five billion. Internal leadership conflict raised confer- concerns for investors. I would be a little bit concerned too if I was an investor. Or I would maybe, be like, dude, the CEO cares. Maybe the old CEO <laughs> was not. fucking around too much, and so they said this guy got to go. F around and find out. Yeah. All right, um, so yeah, we could either talk about Apple or talk about Diddy. <laughs> we got to talk Apple. Okay, we just gotta we go just, for it. Diddy's going to prison for life, but there's only <laughs> one iOS 18. That's true. Diddy didn't code any of it. Uh, no, no, he was just an advisor, actually. <laughs> right. All yeah. that. Yes, iOS 18 was just released. As well as the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro, there is not a single thing. Not, I'm not want to say a single thing, but 90% of the things, software-wise, that um, Apple announced on stage or in their video, is not being shipped with this phone on day one. Everything mm-hmm. that's exciting is coming out in a few months. New Siri not out. Apple intelligence not out. A bunch of camera features not out. Um, what gives? 
Apple. I know they kind of just announced their partnership with um, OpenAI and all this AI stuff, but mm -hmm. no one would have like really been like, oh, bad on you for like waiting until December to unleash, um, um, release a finished product. But they probably couldn't do that because, you know, holidays and shit and they want to like have this shit like already rolled out before mm -hmm. then. But still, like there's literally no physical nothing that they like, announced that's on the phones well besides like ios 18 features which they announced back in june but mm -hmm. the selling point for the new iphone is apple intelligence and mm -hmm. that's not coming out for a couple months unfortunately that's actually preventing me from making the purchase interesting <laughs> yeah so maybe people and... that maybe they might see even less buys or upgrades than they would if there's a, a phone without AI because they know AI is coming. Not only that, Apple just stopped selling last year's model to yeah. try to get people Wild. to buy the new one. Um, now these things are so identical that like the like you wouldn't be able to tell what kind of phone it is unless you like look in the settings. Um, like everything is the same besides the colors. Maybe a bigger bezel, but Better camera for sure, but you know, the average person doesn't really like notice the camera bump unless they're going from like three or four generations prior. Yeah. Interesting stuff. There's um, um someone sent me uh they might have been upgrading a phone and I sent you the picture. Look at all these different Apple devices and prices people have to think of about trading. There's an iPhone sixteen iPhone 16 plus, iPhone 16 Pro, iPhone 16 Pro Max, uh, and then mm -hmm. a bunch of other options with different uh, storage. Is there too many products, perhaps? Um. Okay, so these are all the same pro. I see what you're saying. These are all the same product, but just different sizes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know. I don't know because I feel like every person wants like something different. Like some people really hate the big phone and some people really hate the small phone and some people don't care about like a pro version. And some people are like, Oh, I need that extra camera power or I need the latest chip. So I don't really know how you could offer less um, unless you just like, is it all hardware? The difference the changes. Yeah. It's all hardware. Now there are some software differences, but that's just because the hardware can, the newer hardware can handle the newer software. But yeah, I don't know. And it's, all, it's also, because um, you said last episode that the average time people upgrade About their phones years. is five years. Yeah. But but you know, I don't know. I'm not like if I was Tim Cook, I wouldn't be scared or anything because you know they can just make up the difference by launch like because doing their services because like everybody is fucking paying at least ten dollars a month every month for some Apple service, whether it's Apple Music or fucking news or Apple Arcade or fucking Apple Care, which is huge, or um iCloud, which is huge. Um, they make a shit ton of money from that. Um, if they need cash, all they needed to do is raise each the price of each of those services by like a dollar or two, and people would bitch and complain for a day. But they're not going to cancel. They're not going to cancel yeah. your fucking iCloud because all your <laughs> memories are on there for the last from the last ten years. So and then you like, can't see them in vision goggles. Yeah. So like, you're going to re-record. If fucking investors are giving Tim Cook shit. Hey man, how come the Vision Pro isn't selling like you thought it would? Hey man, how come people aren't buying iPhones every year like they used to? You just be like, yo, motherfucker, shut the fuck up. Look at these <laughs> services. Like, who cares that I spent 20 billion on Apple TV Plus and we only have five subscribers? Like, Apple sure music Cook, is Cook, killing it. Cook has a deck that said that says STFU, look at these services. I mean, services was always kind of the biggest thing. Yeah. Like, Recurring is short monthly yeah and apple doesn't even have to charge for ios 18 or mac os when they used to 
they used to charge for those upgrades, but now they make so much money from other shit, especially the, oh, we didn't even talk about the credit cards that might think might be happening, but. So I'm switching from gold into chase. Yeah, that's huge. Cause that's, uh, I forgot the number. It was like something $27 billion or something. Um, and debt that okay. Apple or consumer debt that Apple has that they would, uh, that Goldman has that they would transfer over to Chase. Yeah. And that credit card is, it doesn't have the best fucking rewards by far, but it is by far the best like user experience from the app perspective. It's like, you'll be paying it and it'll be like, oh, you just paid off all of the food you ate in June of 2024. Would you like to pay $20 more so that you can pay off your gas? And I'm just like, whoa, dude. Like other fucking credit card app or apps are so fucking cumbersome and cluttered. Like Apple got it right. So they should really um be with the best uh bank for show. We'll see what happens with the Apple intelligence and if growth and sentiment uh, stops to stops waning. I'm bullish on it. I'm bullish. Once they push it to like other shit, like fucking Apple CarPlay. Um, I do believe that. I hope. I'm like pretty, I I I believe that it will be a pretty good product. Because if you got a, G, a GPT that can like, if I can talk to Siri better, just a little bit, like fifteen percent better, mm -hmm. pretty nice. No, it has the potential, I think. Besides them renting out the search bar to Google for twenty billion a year. I think it does have the potential to be one of the most profitable products that they make simply because it's will be so powerful and they won't be paying for any of the compute. It will all be fucking Microsoft doing it or Amazon or whoever they partner with. They just make it look pretty. Give it Apple to the billion. Yeah. Give it to the billion richest consumers in the world, iPhone users. <laughs> and ChatGPT is going to be like, okay, I need more of this crack that you're giving me. <laughs> Name a price and I'll write a check. And then I'll just ask Daddy Microsoft to write it up. Big, big Windows, Big Foursquare. Foursquare is a different company. All righty, dude. Let's wrap All it up. Little LA sesh. Um, Rick and Bob, thanks for listening. See you next time in a different location. Yes, sir.